I spent over six months building a desktop app and it ruined my life. I would rather light my hands on fire than build another desktop app. And it all started when I learned about updates. When you update a website, hooray, everyone sees the new website. When you update a desktop app, start praying that everybody actually downloads the update. You can't force them to download it. That's bad UX. What if they're streaming? Oh, ClipBot's updating. Oh, I died. And now it's my fault that you suck at Fortnite. Okay, so you gotta spam the shit out of them with an update pop-up every single Single time you make a new version, but guess what? They never click it. Okay, Clipbot is on version 172, and one guy named Brad is still on version 134. <laughs> and in version 120, I added automatic bug reports, so that every time there's an error, I get an email. And now Gmail is making me pay for storage because Brad's 10 gigabyte log file gets emailed to me every five. Minutes. You know that pop-up that shows up when you download a sketchy desktop app and it's like, hey, we don't know who made this. It's probably a virus and it's going to mine Bitcoin on your computer, right? That That's the default, okay? If you make a calculator app that's a desktop app, that's, that's a virus now as far as the government is concerned, okay? And if you want, you want that pop-up to go away, you have to convince Microsoft and the government that you're not a virus. Do you understand how insane that is? You can just make a website. No one cares if you make a website, but if you make a desktop app and, and like the logo doesn't load fast enough, knock, 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 FBI, open up. So they make you pay hundreds of dollars for a license that says you're not a virus. It's called a code signing certificate, okay? And for a code signing certificate, you need three things, code, a legal business address and a UB key. I had code, okay? I don't have a legal business address because I move around all the time. I can't use my house as a business address. I don't have a house, okay? And I can't use my parents' house because they said, please, please stop putting our address on the internet. But yeah, uh, so I bought what's called a UPS business mailbox, which means I can get mail for my business at UPS. And then I had to convince the government that I work and live inside of the mailbox to get this certificate. My app has a mailbox. Does my app need a mailbox? No, but at least now I finally have somewhere for Brad to shove his ass. So the last thing you need is a YubiKey, okay, which is this little stick that you plug in, you use it for two-factor authentication, you poke it, it prints out a password, right? And I already had a YubiKey, and I was like, finally, finally I have a win, I don't have to spend more money, and they said, no, you need a YubiKey with FIPS, I was like, what is FIPS? And they were like, it's the Federal Information Processing Standard, and I was like, fuck it, please shoot me. So I bought one, and this, this is it, and it cost me 200 dollars to ship this tiny nugget to Thailand. So all in all, before I've even shipped a single line of code, I've spent $350 on a code signing certificate, $250 on a UPS mailbox, and $200 getting this little Yubi key shipped to Thailand. So if you're planning on building a desktop app, let your roommate know, cause you can't pay rent that month. Now let's talk about libraries, okay? So a library is when you take someone else's code and you put it in your app so you don't have to rewrite all the same stuff, right? Now Clipbot, the desktop app, edits videos. So it takes Twitch clips and it converts them into TikToks and YouTube shorts. So it takes like the camera and takes the gameplay and then it puts them on top of each other and it prints out a video for a phone. So to do any video editing, you have to use this library called FFmpeg, which is a library written in hieroglyphics. It is it is the Mayan calendar of other people's code. It is it is the Death Star, but it's all the controls are in a different language. Okay, it's the most complicated code in the world to use. That's not even the bad part. Okay, if I were building a website and I wanted to use FFmpeg, I could just install it on my server and then I could use it. If there were any errors, I could look at my server and I could fix them and life would be good. But life's not good. <laughs> I made a desktop app, which means every time <laughs> Someone installs Clipbot, they also have to install all of FFmpeg, which means every time somebody installs my tiny little robot, it's dragging along with it a Death Star that gets installed on their computer. And what do you think happens when the Death Star doesn't work? I want you to imagine the hell 
of debugging someone else's nightmare, extremely complex code on someone else's computer when the error log got deleted yesterday and there wasn't room in my inbox for it. Let's talk about platforms, okay? Windows, Linux, Mac. Clipbot is only supported on Windows. Why? Because if I wanted to support it on Mac, I would have to go through code signing all over again. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. And to support it on Linux, that's actually pretty easy. There's just like one different command that you run, but I'm not doing it anyway. Nobody uses Linux. You use Arch? I don't care. I don't care. Finally, let's talk about crashes, okay? Because an error is one thing. Ooh, a little pop-up. I'm sorry, your upload didn't happen. Ah, send an email, right? But a crash. Okay, a crash is when your entire app explodes and then all of the information about it disappears off the face of the earth. An app crash on desktop is when you wake up one day and your partner of 10 years left in the middle of the night and they took all of their stuff with them and they didn't leave a note and you're just sitting there and you're wondering why, why? And your customer's also sitting there for some reason and they're wondering why, why? And you don't know and they don't know and so you're trying to install this thing called Sentry because it's supposed to save you from all the crashes reports but then Brad never updates and you get his app crashes constantly and restarts and then it crashes and then it restarts and then it crashes and you hit 5,000 errors within five minutes of your quota resetting and your quota is 5,000 and Sentry keeps telling you you're over your quota please pay you're over your quota please pay but you can't pay because you don't have any more money because you spent it all on code signing and a box anyway I build web apps now subscribe like the video Buy my apps. Thanks.